Hola, hola. Hola, ahoy. Um, namaste. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, product, uh, a product talk by Pipedrive. Um, I'm Krishna Panika. Um, I'm uh, Pipedrive's VP of product and uh, very excited to jump into this session where we talk about our most uh, successful launch. And uh, before we introduce you to the team, I um, wanted to mention a couple of things, a couple of um, highlights. So one is we're going to have um, we're going to have a feedback form at the end because we'd love to know what you think. We haven't done one of these sessions um, for a while, definitely not in this format, because we're bringing together. We're not just bringing the PM or the designer or the researcher or the marketer that got involved in it. We're going to just bring them all in. Right. It's the whole team. You know, that's the unit of innovation here. So we brought the whole team and really get them to tell their story of how how they launched uh, this product and how the bumps in the road and how it led to success. But in this form, we'll, we'll give you links to this. Um, I highly recommend you fill it in. Not only will we get better, but uh, there's some great swag in it. We have some legendary swag at uh, Pipedrive. So you'll see designer notebooks, uh, uh, reusable coffee cups, hoodies. We have great hoodies. My kids keep asking me for more hoodies. They love the hoodies. Um, so uh, watch out for that. Uh, you'll see some links to that in the deck. But uh, for now, why don't we have the team introduce themselves? And uh, we'll have a link to that later on. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm glad that you join us today. My name is Katrina, and I work as a product researcher in Pipedrive. And the last year and a half, actually, I spent mainly exploring leads. And I'm Czech. I'm based in, in the Prague office. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kiva. Um, I am in the product marketing department. I have been at Pipedrive for almost five years. And very similar to a lot of people on this call, my primary focus the last year and a half has been on all things leads. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Zbigniew, uh, and I'm a designer uh, in Pipedrive for basically it was two years last week. Uh, and I'm uh, based in the Prague office working on leads uh, products. All right, so hey, everybody. My name is Sasha. Uh, I work as a product manager here in Pipedrive. We've been for almost around two years in a Prague office, and I'm the product manager of our lead management features called Leads Inbox and the Lead Booster. Thank you, guys. Thank you, folks. And I should say, we have a few people there based in Prague. Uh, don't worry. We, we, not everyone's in Prague. I'm based in London. We actually have a team in Lisbon. We have a team in Riga in Latvia, we have another team in R2 in Estonia, we have another team in Tallinn. We're kind of all over the place, but we wanted to focus on this one team, which we think you're going to like. So what I would do if you've not um, uh, done this before, you know, pick out your phone, scan this code, and you'll see the option to actually, you can either enter this directly or just put your phone, scan the QR code, and actually enter the questions you have in, because at the end, we're going to have a Q&A and we can deep dive, happy to stay on a bit longer if needs be to answer your questions on this, because I think you're going to find it interesting. Um, so scan that code. If you're not able to do that, just go to slido.com and just enter PB Talks and put your questions in. And you can always upvote a question that you like, right? So with that, why don't we kick off? Um, because I remember you guys kicking this off and i think i was really in the sideline so i thought let's let's do, let's dive into this so so first sasha like like how how does the team set up work and how did you get started right so uh before we actually get to the to the story of our success here uh of our product i i just want to say that uh, one of the main contributors uh of the of the success uh at, uh that we achieved is based on the fact that how we work here and that the, our product organization has adopted the culture of so-called empowered teams and uh, our product teams own the problem areas. And we are basically set to discover the best solution we see fit uh, for our customer problems. This includes research, data analysis, development, and also the go-to-market strategy. 
So when we kind of uh, started going uh, with this process, uh, our initial research that we started performing at the beginning has actually shown that the biggest pain point of our uh, customers pointed that, that one of the main pain points is getting more leads actually. And uh, to explore the best possible solutions and validate them with our customers, we went into the direction of uh, Design Sprint, uh, which is a process coined by Google Ventures for those who are not really familiar with this term. But uh, I believe that uh, our designers, Binya, can say a little bit more about the Sprint itself. Yeah, actually, I can definitely jump in. Uh, I can share a screen. Can you see? Can you see these photos from? Oh the yeah, very clear. Very, very first design sprint. Uh, actually, more than two years ago. Two years ago. Uh, so the funny fact is that actually this design sprint was also kind of kickoff of the Prague office. So we are kind of you know growing together with uh, Leeds product and basically Lead Booster, the initial product. Uh, so everything started with this design sprint. Um, where we just, you know, were put together for a few days, uh, designers, product managers, developers as well, uh, and trying, you know, to find the uh, really uh, initially quick solution to uh, help our customers to uh, generate more leads, right? Because there was there was uh, basically a really major request, a major need at the time. Uh, so we collaborated uh, a few days and. As a as the outcome of uh, this design sprint, that was a it was a really really simple chatbot uh, that uh, uh, that came out uh, as as the output uh, of the design sprint. Um, I can maybe share uh, share the visuals of uh, of how it how it how it works uh, at the really first stage. Uh, so what you see right now is a prototype uh, uh, output of this design sprint that we tested out with. Uh, a uh, few uh, real customers and uh, uh, and basically that was really first product of uh, uh, of Prag office uh, and uh, uh, we will tell you more afterwards uh, what the progress uh, what progress we've made in in last two years as well uh, cool thank you Zvenek. so so you kind of switched the playback. So you kind of had this idea, work on leads. You did this design sprint, um, and you had the prototype, and um, and you built it. How long did it take to build, by the way? Uh, actually, actually, uh, I think the design sprint was something in, in January uh, two years ago, uh, and uh, from the from the design sprint to the very first launch. It took like two or three months. Uh, if maybe you guys you can correct me, but it was really something like uh, in terms of months. Uh, and uh, uh, for sure, okay. I mean, I can again, I can maybe share again uh, the very first beta beta version of uh, yeah. So I hope you see. Uh, so you can just imagine, you know, uh, the lead booster, the very first lead booster is chatbot uh, where you can you can. Uh, uh, basically customize uh, the initial setup uh, of this of this chatbot flow. Uh, so in the very first uh, release, uh, basically customers cannot uh, customize the flow. Uh, you can only you know change the copy and you know welcome message and uh, and this kind of stuff. Uh, and also quite a funny thing. I mean, uh, kind of talking about you know I mean explaining how. How it was uh, about this quick releasing this product was that the whole uh, chatbot thing was placed in the settings of the pipe drive, you know. So uh, actually, there was no leads product at this time. Uh, so the first product uh, was placed in the settings, uh, and I think uh, you will hear uh, more about about this issue uh, later on today. Cool. So and so this is one of those chatbots that you see sometimes, you know, like on the bottom right of a page. It popped out. You had it in a couple of months. So, so Keila, how did it perform? Like, uh, you you guys knocked it out of the park, right? So it's a it's a little bit of a tricky question. So when we first rolled out uh, the first version of Lee Booster, which as uh, Svinjak has explained, was uh, at its heart just a chatbot, um, we released it in what we called a beta phase. Um, nothing too groundbreaking. Where we just reached out to our customers and we said, Hey, we're building this really cool new chatbot called Lee Booster. We'd love for you to try it. Um, in our communication to them, we explained, hey, this is in beta. Um, you're going to have to pay for it later. 
Um, but at the time, what we really underestimated was this was the first time in PyDrive's history that we were ever doing some, something like this, um, that we were going to make something additional that the customers had to pay for. Because uh, until that point, any new feature, any new kind of new sparkly thing, if we gave it to the customer, they pretty much expected it to be on their plan because that's always how it worked. But with Lee Booster, that wasn't the case. So when we first rolled it out in beta, we had a really good response. We were, we were really feeling good about ourselves. And then when it came around to actually ask our customers for money, uh, we realized we didn't perform as well as we did. So we actually only saw 20% of the customers that were really actively using it in beta. And I say actively, so they were getting value out of it, uh, ended up paying for it. And obviously that was a little bit of a hurt to our ego because we thought we were gonna knock it out of the park, but um, initially it, was a, it wasn't as big of a success as we thought. And then um, after kind of the initial launch, the growth of people buying the booster, um, it was growing, but at a very kind of gradual linear pace. So we did realize at that time, like, what did we do wrong? And kind of the first thing that we did is we made sure to reach out to all our customers that were using in beta, but didn't actually pay for it once we asked for money. And we asked them, hey, what happened? Because obviously you're using this, you're getting leads from it, you're getting value. And what we realized was even though in the messaging we said, you know, something along the lines of this is beta, you'll have to pay for it eventually, because it was such a new thing for our customers, they didn't really remember that or kind of skipped it over. In addition to that, a lot of our customers would use it in the product and there would be no reinforcement or reminder in the product that's that was this was a beta thing, it'll become paid later. Yeah. So a lot of Fact, that factors led up to that. And um, after talking to them as well, we realized, you know, there was just so many more ways we can make this product better. Because uh, while it was doing the job and our messaging was around a, a chat bot that can get you leads, we really realized that our customers, you know, they needed a lot of different ways to get more leads. And one thing that really resonated with us in our interviews was that customers, they just wanted something to get them more leads. So when we said, okay, we can get you more leads, the response to that was overwhelming. And I think Katarina um, can take over from me, but basically we realized at this point there was so much more research, so much more opportunity in this sector that we weren't really fully realizing from our first initial go at it. Okay, and, and so before Katarina goes in, so just to replay, so you started off with this chatbot thing and uh, we, we maybe mishandled the messaging somewhat, <laughs> or at least we didn't make it clear enough that this is gonna be paid, it's the first time, like the customers experiencing this. And then the bigger problem, it seems like this deeper problem was actually just, just help me get leads full stop. Let's not worry about the feature, just help whatever it takes to get me more leads. So this idea of having um, uh, leads available um, constantly. Good. So yeah, what did you do then at that point when you when you hit this, uh, hit this bump, Katrina? Yeah, actually, I, I before I moved to what we did as a, like what kind of research and how robust the data uh, were. Maybe I will highlight one thing that Spaniak already touched and it was uh, the place where this chatbot was actually placed in the product. And uh, when, you know, we ran a lot of usability testing and uh, we identified the discoverability of this chatbot, uh, it, it's, it's an issue. It was hidden in the settings as, as Spaniak show. And actually that was a trigger for us uh, to start thinking about a new navigation, how to actually in the whole product, not only in leads part, in the whole product. And well, our, our thinking was how to make, um, uh, how to build a more prominent place for uh, new features like chatbot, but we expected that there will be more in the future. So, uh, so that was a trigger. And actually during 2020, uh, Pipe drive uh, reman completely the navigation, and that was a huge thing, uh, not only for us as, as a pipe drive people, but also for our customers. Uh, so that's one thing I wanted to highlight. Uh, well, new navigation came along with uh, with this uh, effort on lead generation tools, and uh, well, I would say. Uh, in terms of the research journey, uh, we started the design sprint with quite limited knowledge at the time. Uh, guys already said that we knew uh, that our customers uh, need more leads and that was the major insight at that point. Uh, we started doing some interviews, we also ran some surveys on our customer base, uh, but uh, then we released the chatbot, there was a lot of 
prototype testing, as I said. Uh, but the major part of the research came, came once uh, we, we released the chatbot. And there was a massive amount uh, of research we did, including interviews, uh, usability sessions, uh, surveys. And also we, we try to understand what our competitors do in this area. So when I say a massive amount of data, I mean hundreds of interviews, uh, the tens of surveys and a lot of competitor tracking. And maybe one thing that I would highlight, what was the most difficult part of this job at that time was to actually understand what, what, what's the underlying problem, because our customers often say what they want and they are very specific and clear, but well, our job is to understand what's the underlying problem and how we can offer a solution for this problem. And it's not always uh, very explicit. And that was the hardest thing at that point, I would say. I, li I like that insight, by the way, like that there's that problem behind the problem. Like what people don't, what people say don't always mirror like the deeper problem. Um, yeah, I should speak to my wife about that. That's, uh, that's a good tip. What's the real question <laughs> that she has? Um, okay, so, uh, so, uh, so we, we get that in deeper insight. And, um, uh, and then what do you do with that, then, I guess, the Benya could be interesting to hear your perspective. Yeah, actually, Katka, Katka mentioned this that basically we kind of helped users, you know, with uh, with their initial problem, right? With generating new leads, right? But we kind of, you know, as a side product, we created a new new issue, right? New problem for them. Uh, I can I can again show some visuals to so you can you can better imagine. Um, so this is uh, this is basically the core of PipeDrive, right? So uh, uh, it's it's section we call deals, product called deals, uh, where you just move your potential like deals from the very first stage to the very last one. Uh, and you see on the screen screen that uh, initially uh, the first stage was called lead in, right? Um, and you know these two years ago, uh, typical customer. Uh, was you know just manually uh, creating those leads or importing new ones from some spreadsheets whatsoever, uh, but during the, those two years when what, once we you know released the chatbot, uh, we also uh, there was also a product called Web Forms. Uh, so this first very first stage uh, started automatically. Uh, uh, I mean, starting to be filled you know automatically by kind of quantum of new new items. And this is kind of typical typical view of uh, uh, of this dashboard of a typical customer. Uh, so that the first stage was really there was tens or hundreds of new leads, and it was really messy and kind of unable to sort it out and you know to work with those new incoming leads to see their relevancy and so on. Uh, so this was the new issue that we you know uh, were kind of faced uh, faced through to 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 resolve for our customers. Um, and basically, I can also also show you the. The current basically uh, current solution where uh, all these all these uh, all these uh, efforts of our, of our team uh, in the last two two years uh, just uh, were heading to uh, creating uh, the new section which is called leads, uh, which also you know kind of resolved partially the issue with the navigation of the initially of the uh, of the chatbot that was hidden in uh, in the settings, uh, and yeah, currently at the moment we have leads in box. Where the user can uh, really easily, you know, sort uh, all the new uh, incoming leads uh, uh, created by uh, chatbot, you know, and other uh, current uh, products. Uh, so that's uh, that's basically uh, the story of uh, last few months. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that that's it. I remember this. So I remember where you guys helped with this kind of lead generation piece helping people get more leads and then they had this bigger problem of yeah but like now i've got so many leads ish <laughs> if we're doing our job right got so many leads i'm kind of feel it this doesn't really work in this pipeline view and like we you had to then really think about how we manage leads and help our customers manage leads which is nice um and so uh so like with that what did you then kind of build next it's like how did you take that and process it what did you do next i guess sasha zabinia could be interested in how you handle that 
Yeah, so, so maybe as, uh, as Scott mentioned before, so we did collect enormous amount of feedback through the surveys, uh, interviews, and uh, of course, a lot of customers have been reaching out to us directly and giving us feedback, which was great. But with this huge amount of feedback, it was very difficult for us to like, kind of like organize it in a, in a right way. So what we did is that actually we adopted a tool called Product Board, which kind of like uh, help us streamline the feedback uh, into a const very constructive way. And uh, with streamlining this feedback, we actually identified a couple of areas where we wanted to focus on next. So one of those areas is that many of our customers actually wanted to reduce the chatbot to involve their sales reps directly with their potential customers. And this kind of like uh, brought up the inception of idea for uh, live chat that we currently are, have already developed and uh, a lot of our customers are already using it. So the next, uh, the next area that we identify is that also we, we previously had actually kind of old uh, solution for web forms, but based on the feedback that we collected uh, through these couple of years back, uh, we completely revamped uh, our old web forms based on this feedback, which led to inception of new web forms that you see right now. And uh, third area that we identify also is that some of our customers actually uh, kind of said that they don't have such a huge traffic to really benefit out of these inbound uh, lead generation tools. So they kind of would prefer to have or have an interest in having the outbound lead generation tool which led to uh, creation of the tool that you know today as a prospector. And lastly, uh, some of our customers with the higher traffic but low conversion rate wanted to have a way to capitalize on that traffic. And based on that, we kind of came up with uh, the feature called Web, Web Visitors, which basically allows our customers uh, to create uh, leads uh, by identifying the source of their traffic. Nice. Okay. So yeah, I can see how you guys layered it on, right? So you had, you had the chat bot, um, which does all the automation. Then you introduce live chat to extend that further as they want to engage with customers. Um, and then you, uh, you included this, uh, prospector. So you can start including getting outbound leads. I, I remember actually during the pandemic, right? It was during the pandemic, We'd really, uh, had this and we had a lot of customers really struggling to get leads and so that ability to you know that those relationships were cut off and get those outbound leads and then um and then of course with web business tracking so that really kind of grew the offering i recall how you know we we, we grew the team out and and as such the offering grew so um so Keila, so how did you guys think about then uh positioning that yeah, so um, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the things that really stuck out in our initial interviews was this idea of just being able to promise and guarantee and just tell our users straight up that we're going to get you more leads. Um, at the beginning, again, it was just a chatbot, but as Sasha has mentioned, we then really went into overdrive into all these different ways we can support your lead generation. And even better than that, we also, as uh, Swinyak was describing, we also really stepped up our game in kind of lead management. So. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier, is because it was a minor thing, was when we did our first launch, um, I was supporting a lot of different teams at the moment. But what we realized over like the upcoming year was that you know this this launch, this new product we were building, really needed a dedicated marketing person, and I was really really fortunate and lucky to be the person to do that. Um, but it really goes to show that PyDrive is really uh, supporting our new products and our new areas. And basically because of that, I was really able to be heavily involved kind of with research, with design, with products. And that, I think I know it sounds obvious, but sometimes I think it, it's not so obvious is like the, the earlier you get marketing involved, the better the product typically will be when it goes to market a little bit later. So working hand in hand with Sasha, Katarina, Zunek, it really helped craft the messaging, realize what would um, really respond well with our users. And basically, when we went to market, we knew this, we, this had the opportunity to be a really big success. And uh, we actually even surprised ourselves. So I think it's been, yeah, can uh, share a screen. 
Um, I think you can see pretty evidently where this new launch happened, but um, end of 2020, or until then, you can see the growth again. We were growing, but it was kind of at the same consistent slope. But right around September, you'll see that that slope is drastically inclined. And I, when I say we even surprised ourselves, uh, typically what happens with any product launch is it's pretty good for maybe a month, a couple months. But what, what we've seen with Lee Booster is that growth really hasn't slowed down significantly. Um, and again, that's just a testament to all the teams that are involved. Um, one of the big things that I was really focusing on um, with our go-to-market strategy was basically how we can really reach out and touch our new signups as opposed to our, our existing current base. Um, obviously, our existing pipe drive base is the most, not most important, but it's kind of the easiest base we can market to and sell to. But after a while, you can only touch so many people in that base without kind of spamming them, telling about the same thing over and over. So uh, what we really focused on was basically getting our new signups, our new NPCs to really be involved in this lead generation, lead management space, and really see the value in lead booster. So we really changed the flows, whether that was on the web, in billing, as navigation, as Katarina just mentioned as well, to really give as many entry points and just kind of nods to lead booster as possible. And one of the things that's really amazing is since this secondary launch last year, um, the amount of customers that are using Lead Booster when they first pay and use for Pipe Drive has increased by 500%. So we've seen a really huge growth. And again, we've even, even surprised ourselves, but um, that is basically why we're seeing this, this continued success is that a lot of our new signups, a lot of our new NPCs are continually to pick up uh, Lead Booster in uh, really awesome for us ways. I, re I remember actually, Keila, when you were telling me about these growth numbers, you and, and the team, and I remember getting you guys to justify those numbers because I, did, I didn't believe them. <laughs> we hadn't seen growth like that, at least for, uh, for a new launch. So um, yeah, that was uh, great work. And one thing, I think one of the reasons we thought about doing this is, is really the values when you guys all come together, right? It's, it's not like any one person or any one discipline is getting this done it's it's that combination that is what i really see is this kind of let's call it this unit of innovation um uh, real testament right it, it's actually the fact that you guys kind of lined up all of these points and that you matched the uh the value creation that was happening with the value capture that uh that the business was able to actually capture some of that value which is great so uh let's play back now, let's just see if i can Play back some of the, the learnings you've just shared there. So one is, I, I, mean, I mean, we just got up and running fast. You know, maybe we gave you a weak definition. Hey, we, we spent 10 years working on deals. Can we can we maybe work on the bit before that? Because we've had some customers saying they're, they're struggling to get leads. You, you had a sprint, you pushed out a feature. The response was, yeah, you know, not bad. It's okay, nothing dramatic. Um, and then I think that's when we, uh, uh, Katrina, I think you kind of really, with along with the team, started to dig deep and really get deep as to what the real problems were that our customers had. I think that's a key element here. I think, I think, uh, I think that's kind of like our almost our ultimate hack, right? Is is actual customer research, um, really understanding deep down what the problems were, and uh, I think what you said. Uh, uh, Keila resonated where it was, and and Katrina, about the fact that listen, I'm I'm not after a, a chatbot per se. Like, I just want leads. I want leads on tap. Ideally, I don't want to do as little work as possible to get them. And uh, and that positioning that you then created around that, I think, really connected with our customers, um, and actually, you know genuinely help them with the pain point. We're, we're lucky to be in a business, you know, where we solve more problems, we, we tend to capture more revenue. Um, so I know there was a lot more to it than that, but I just wanted to just summarize that and really give, being respectful of time, give the opportunity for um, people on the call to maybe maybe ask us questions, but maybe it's worth just, Benyek, maybe just show the slide again, uh, where we can say one, fill this form in, right? So scan that in, highly recommend that. If you want some awesome swag, you really want to do that, we'll put you in a lottery. 
and then um, this will this will wing its way over to you. Um, uh, we'd love to hear, love to hear what what worked, what didn't work, what we can improve. Uh, if should we even do this again? Let us know. Uh, and then in terms of questions, we have uh, a slide a slido which uh, you can scan that in. Um, it's just it's the wrong hashtag, I think. It's maybe go to the first one we had. I think we changed the label, didn't we? It was yeah. uh, PD Talks. So if you type in PD Talks or scan that QR code, you can put some questions in. And I am very interested to know if we have any questions now. So um, I don't know if someone else can share that. Uh, who can help with that, actually? Uh -huh. We have, I think, Uli working in the wings in the background. One of the munchkins in the background making magic happen. So we'll try and get those questions up. Bear with us. Yeah. Great. Okay. So let's see what questions we have here. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Right. So first question. First question we have, and again, you can, as you're reading this, you can still scan that QR code, still type that into PD Talks in Slido.com, and we'll see these questions come in live. Whatever gets upvoted the most, we'll answer first. So we'll try and work through these. So first question we have from Pedro. Uh, when, uh, when you failed, you did lots of surveys and interviews. You are a big organization with lots of users and money. <laughs> Uh, what's your suggestion for small startups with few users and resources? Um, any of you guys want to jump in on that? What do you guys think? I've got some I, ideas, but yeah. I might, I might say here that, of course, running a survey, especially on non-customers, that's an expensive and very time-demanding process. But running interviews, it's, I would say it's pretty cheap. It's just about people dedicated time to run the interviews and then analyze them properly and then follow up. So I would say, I would start with interviews uh, to get the first understanding. And well, in a, well with, if pe more people are involved, you might cover quite a lot of, a lot of customers by interviews. So that's where I would start. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's, that's my recommendation. And of course, then you might be also creative by using uh, social media for some for some uh, data gathering that might also help instead of using, for instance, some professional panels for, for data collection. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be afraid of using, for instance, LinkedIn or Facebook uh, for some, just kick off a, a topic, for instance, and gather answers. Yeah, you... I, would, I would maybe, I would just maybe add, my, in my experience, uh, our customers, and not only customers, I mean, of Pipedrive, also from my previous experience, right? Uh, they are usually quite motivated, you know, to help you improving with improving your product, right? Because improving the product is also helping themselves, right? For in their work and efficiency. So it's it it seems maybe impossible, but it's not as not as hard, you know, to get uh, uh, relevant users, you know, to help you with uh, validation and uh, uh, this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I would add to that, like, let's just say, let's take an extreme example that Pedro might be pointing out, which is, listen, I work at a startup and maybe I have no customers. And uh, you'd be surprised at resources you have. Um, uh, we might seem like a company, by the way, that they're just sharing us with money. You'd be surprised. I don't give, uh, I don't give these guys that much money uh, <laughs> for budget for research, uh, Katharina can tell you. So, uh, but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, a little bit of hustle work. So tap into your network for sure. Two is depending who your target market uh, target customer is, go to where they hang out. You you'll probably find that they're in forums, user groups, right? Where do they hang out? Go to where they hang out, and then uh, people with the biggest pains will come to you, right? They're doing it not to get pay, but actually because this problem is so significant that they are actually paying with their time, and that's actually a validation for you. In fact, the fact they're even giving their time to talk to you is, is, is a form of validation. 
So um, yeah, even on zero budget, you'd be surprised what you can do. Um, okay, so let's go to the next question uh, by, is, is that say RCPC? Uh, can you show some real use cases, chatbots of your clients in real time? Uh, wait, what, did I just miss that? Uh, yeah, in real time. So uh, I'm not sure if we can answer. That's not like play a Q&A type question. Maybe we can uh, tackle that at the end if, if whoever it is um, in the feedback form, just give your details. Uh, maybe we can run through some specific examples. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I, I, I can just maybe briefly, you know, uh, the, the biggest advantage of the chatbot comparing, for example, to web form, right? Uh, as that, you know, uh, it's it really engaging the website visitor, right? So, so our customer uh, just easily put the chatbot usually on the contact page on the website. Uh, the website visitor comes to the website and easily, you know, clicks like three times on the chatbot, which, you know, pops up automatically. Uh, and then, you know, he or she is saved to the leads inbox and can be contacted, right? So, so it's, my, it's much better, you know, in terms of, you know, um, collecting relevant leads uh, because, you know, quite many uh, people, I mean, website visitors are kind of lazy, you know, to fill in a web form. So the chatbot is much, much more effective in collecting the leads. Uh, so the typical use case is really putting the chatbot on the contact page uh, for collecting your new incoming leads. And maybe what I would add here from the user's perspective, from the sales rep perspective, it helps to qualify leads, which is a very important step from, you know, from lead to, to deal or to, to, to real business. And it helps people to qualify those leads directly in the real time once uh, the person is engaging with, with the chatbot. So uh, that was uh, one of the key use cases for us to help people to, to uh, qualify leads. Yeah. Oh, um, and next question, I think somewhat rhetorical, is is Pipe Drive only, only hiring absolutely gorgeous people or what? Um, yeah, what we have here at Pipe Drive are amazing filters. Uh, so we just look amazing. You won't believe what we really look like behind these filters. No, uh, <laughs> we just hire awesome people. That's it, full stop. Um, and that's, that's where the gorgeousness, I think, shines. <laughs> uh, so, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm not included in that roster. It's, it's, it's these guys here. Uh, right, next question. What, if anything, was the greatest technical hurdle you encountered with the chatbot? And there's a how, and how was it overcome? Right, so we didn't, uh, we don't have a, uh, engineers uh, on this call. Actually, that was intentional, by the way. We, we really wanted to focus on the discovery side and, you know, the, the product end of side. How do we go about uh, deciding what to build and how do we position it? Uh, but uh, I don't know if, um, if uh, Sasha, uh, you're, you may be in a position to take that question. If not, I've got, I've got a couple of thoughts on my side. I'm trying actually to think uh, if uh, what, what are actually the main challenges there. I think actually the main challenge was uh, like scaling it uh, to do to the customer base uh, as big as ours, actually. So we do actually have quite a lot, quite a big customer base already. And it was initially very challenging to make sure that uh, the chatbot is uh, available all the time to our customers. So kind of like doing the scale up of this technical uh, solution was I, I think one of the biggest challenges. And of course, then when we started, uh, when, the, when the chatbot started even evolving. So for example, for the live chat, we started involving like third party uh, like solutions into that uh, because uh, it was more of like a technical decision of ours that we, we did develop the majority part of it, but there are certain layers that we kind of like uh, wanted to save time and resources for that. And then we involved the third party. So this kind of like uh, uh, dependency was a little bit challenging uh, on our side, but I think that uh, our engineers actually managed to handle all that really, really well, so. Yeah, another thing that came to mind, which is probably again, um, you know, it, it probably sounds great, you know, when a startup looks at us thinking, oh, we have all these customers, et cetera. You know what we also have? We have lots of legacy code. Right, we have like 10 plus years of code 
And so I know the team, when they were forming, they were kind of hit a bit of a crossroads because they thought, well, we can integrate nice, nicely and seamlessly with the, the pre-existing code, but, but that's a lot of work. That's a lot of stuff to unpick. Uh, and so I know they made some decisions early on, which meant that they can get something out quickly, but actually it meant deferring some forms of debt later on. So I know there were, there were certain issues around kind of our, what we have internally, we call our company database and kind of integrating with that. And I know that was a big hurdle for us in terms of legacy code. Okay, next question we have here is, um, uh, did building Prospector seem feasible for you in the beginning? And what is the innovation here compared to other competitive solutions for lead generation? Really interesting question. Um, who wants to take that one? Uh, maybe I can jump in uh, like quite, kind of briefly here. So I think that with the Prospector, we, uh, we did not really, uh, I mean, this was like completely new area that we started exploring. Uh, at first, uh, our main like uh, lead generation solutions were inbound. So we, we kind of wanted to explore this area, but uh, we were not really sure if it's uh, going to be profitable for us because uh, we we kind of like did some partnerships uh, with our uh, with our partners uh, regarding that. So we were we, we are still exploring this area. I can tell that honestly. So I think that it kind of definitely brings some benefit to our customers. But we'll see in time if we are able to scale it up to the point where it's going to become like a full blown feature with uh, and bring even more value to our customers. Uh, just to add on briefly, um, one thing that really kind of helped us stand out when we built Prospector was a lot of kind of competitors, um, they offer basically only an inbound or only an outbound solution. What really made our offering really strong was we supported you kind of in both ways of lead generation. Um, the other thing that helped us really uh, stand out in Prospector is kind of how we handle kind of how you can get credits to get leads. With a lot of kind of Prospector-like solutions, you kind of pay a very huge fee to get thousands and thousands of leads a month. Um, and also these leads typically have very short expiration dates, like you need to use them within a couple of weeks or a month max. Uh, but we wanted to be a lot more user friendly with our solution. Um, so what we have done with Prospector is allowed users to select maybe one or two leads if that's all they need, um, or you know scale all the way up to that kind of thousand use case. But that's something that we got some feedback on where customers are very happy, like they don't have to buy a thousand dollar package if they maybe only need you know five or ten leads. Um, we're also very user friendly, typical PyDrive um, motto with kind of how people use Prospector. Um, we allow them to use their credits for a longer period of time. Um, so that's kind of, as Sasha mentioned, we do partner with to kind of build it, but kind of the way we allow our customers to use it, um, I feel helped us stand out a bit. Yeah, the other thing I thought about, I think what you guys were quite clever in the sense that you get some tooling like uh, that goes really deep functionality wise. You know, you got, you got these tools that do some amazing web forms or amazing chatbots and, and, and you know you, you subscribe to that one service and for our customers you know especially SMBs they kind of want you know they just kind of want the essentials right and so having something that's really simple doesn't do it doesn't have all the bells and whistles but you know what you you actually have a lot of coverage in terms of tooling there and it's um, easy to use out of the box you can get going with it so I think that that was quite distinctive in its position compared to what's in the market. Um, okay, so next question. Initially, you discussed about your way of doing design sprints. Can you please um, elaborate on that? And also, what product tools do you use? So maybe I can also jump in on this one. Uh, so basically, as I mentioned in the beginning, so design sprint is uh, the term coined or the process coined by Google Ventures. There is actually a book about it that I really recommend for anybody who is interested to get into this uh, more on a deeper level. And basically how it works is that it's like a one week process where you're trying to minimize the risk and uh, like ideate all design uh, solutions possible and then validate those with your customers at the very end of the week. So by the end of the week, you already know 
somehow you, we already have like a tangible solution that you are able to develop and to to, uh, to bring some value to your customers uh, right away. I will, and, I, will maybe, I will maybe just jump in. Actually, this was, I think, the case of this design sprint of, of, of this chatbot, right, two years ago. Um, but actually, uh, we, we, be, we, we do design sprints pretty often. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can recall like five last year, something like this, four or five. Uh, usually, usually we don't do like those uh, five days, you know, design sprints, like the original ones. Well, we just, you know, shortening the very first phase and also the last uh, validation phase. So we usually take it like for two or three days. Uh, so it's not taking, you know, so much time of the whole team, uh, but basically pretty, pretty going uh, according to, uh, to these principles. Uh, yeah. In other words, we are not really going by the book, but uh, yeah. the book is a really good guidance on how to start with design sprints in general. Yeah, as usual, Pipe Drive does it with a twist. We take the Google design sprint and we make it more of a dash, like a really fast oh. dash. Um, so, okay, next question. Maybe I should take this one. Hello, team. It's really nice to know about you and the company's first steps towards this success. Um, uh, and compared to others, I'm not sure what that says, something compared to other, are your future plans for the product? Is it asking what is our future plans for product? I think maybe so it's cutting off some of the text. Um, oh, okay. So I'd like to learn what are future plans for product. Got it. Right. So, uh, okay. So um, I can tell you, but you have to promise to keep it a secret what our future plans are. Can you keep a secret? I'm going to, okay. I'm going to say that's a yes. You're going to keep a secret. Good. So it's just between us. 70 people, right? And maybe whoever sees the recording. Uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, I can I can hint at a few things. So listen, we started off with, with deal management, like opportunity management. And we really focused on salespeople. And that is that, you know, that got us, that gave us terrific growth. And uh, what we saw is that we kept growing, but that growth was starting to, um, uh, the rate of that growth was declining somewhat. Um, and, you know, when we really dug deep and really looked at kind of what are the biggest problems people have is one of them was around leads. Actually, let's, you know, some people actually said to us, listen, before I start working with these opportunities, I need the leads in the first place. And so that's why we have the team here, you know, mostly based in Prague, it's really focused on the problem space to get more leads. Right. And we had originally focused on close deals faster. That was the original problem. Close deals faster. Then we went on to get more leads. And um, what you'll hear from us very soon is uh, we actually want to go left further again, because the other problem we unearthed with um, with our customers was uh, help. Help me nurture my relationships. And so you'll see us, uh, we're going to be coming out with um, a product that really helps connect sales and marketing. But watch this space, more on that to come in the coming weeks. We're very excited by this. So uh, we're, we're having the, the team that's working on that product uh, give an announcement shortly. But uh, that's, that's the next thing. But you're going to see we really are focused on solving the problem uh, around helping companies hit their revenue targets. That's that's kind of the Uber problem we're solving and we're kind of tackling that piece by piece. So I hope, I hope I've given somewhat of an answer there. Uh, so next question. Uh, did building prospect to seem feasible for you in the beginning? I think we answered that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We did answer that, yeah. yeah. So let's, let's mark that as done. Uh, next question, how big was your development team, Sasha? Um, oh, is, uh, it's a, I think it's a longer question, but it's cut off some of it, is it? Oh, no. It yes, is. yes. How so, big was your development team? Yeah, so uh, approximately two years ago, I think we were, we were like uh, slightly uh, over 10 people or 10 to 15. But then in the two years, we grew significantly. Uh, and now we are talking about, we are, as now I'm talking about Prague office uh, uh, specifically. So in the Prague office, we are now over 30 people. Uh, as uh, we have actually multiple product teams already. 
So this yes. consists of designers, researchers, uh, engineers, and uh, also marketeers and data analysts. Spot on. And I know you started a branch out into a couple of other areas, but most, most of you focus on uh, leads. So next question here is, how many clients are involved in interviews, whether you conduct interviews primarily with existing customers or new ones? <laughs> that, that's, that's a good one. And actually that's, uh, well, I would say this is uh, one of the most difficult questions all researchers have, where, when to stop. And well, my answer is, it very much depends on the research objective, you know, what we wanna learn. and. Once we feel like, okay, we have a good understanding, that's the point where we stop with the interview. So it might be 10, it might be 20. It also depends on whether uh, we are trying to understand different segments of those customers or respondents. For instance, in Pipedrive, we, we have companies of different size. There are big companies and small companies. and. Uh, well, these two groups have totally different needs. So usually we need to cover big ones as well as the small ones. So it makes the total number of interviews higher. Uh, but uh, my personal uh, recommendation is to do at least 10 uh, for understanding. And once you're done with 10, uh, start analyzing, start with the synthesis. And at that point, ask yourself, well, do you have the understanding? Are you able to answer the objective you had at the very beginning of the research? And if so, then I would stop at this point. And you know, you know, research it's about iteration. So, well, you need to set up some action points then, and then start again with research. So, uh, that's that's how we work in in a loop. And uh, well, just uh, briefly say about whether we do uh, interviews with customers or non-customers. Uh, I would say. Bot uh, again. It depends on on the question or the objective, but currently we are trying to go beyond our customer space. So we more and more often try to talk to non-customers and understand the potential on the market. So for that need, if you try to understand what's the potential, <laughs> you need to talk to non-customers. So currently, that's what we do more and more. Yeah, that definitely resonates with me, Katrina. I, I think that the 10 number resonates because I've done that in a few places I've been at. And one thing I find is, I think especially people who are used to this qualitative data and say, how many people did you speak to? You know, that's not statistically relevant or, or uh, significant. But actually what you find is if you do this qual research, you start to see pattern matching. And so after a certain number, you start saying, okay, seven, eight, nine, you know what? I'm seeing a pattern. I'm seeing, mm -hmm. I'm getting the same uh, problems keep coming again and again. And so you get to this kind of, let's call it 60, 70% confidence. Exactly. And actually, my, uh, maybe provocatively, I don't believe in 100% confidence. I think if you get to 100% confidence, you've waited too long. If you're that <laughs> sure, if you're that cocksure, probably the whole market knows about it, right? So what's the value there? So you need a certain level of uncertainty to be your value, right? So, you know, get that balance right. Again, even if you're a startup, I think you'd be surprised how much data you can get for free. Um, exactly. Uh, so Maybe th that's the difference between academic and product research. You know, in academia, you can actually spend years doing interviews and analyzing them until you have this 100% certainty. But in product, we have also some other priorities like deliver fast, for instance, and there are engineers waiting for, uh, for, for uh, work. So we have to deliver and we have to stop at one point and accept this uncertainty. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not everyone's comfortable with that, but that's important. So, okay, so next question, which we have from uh, PC. Can you also help with leading relevant traffic to chatbots? How? Um, who's, does anyone, do, do you guys understand the question? Can you also help with leading relevant traffic to chatbots? I'm not sure I understand. Like it. whether yeah. we do some ads, for instance, whether we support ads to really brought yeah. people bring people to the web page i mean I, how i understood it may maybe you know uh 
by default, we're offering uh, uh, a few uh, preset templates, you know, when so when the user uh, uh, is gonna, you know, uh, have a use case for using the chatbot on uh, their website. Uh, so we have uh, a few predefined uh, configuration uh, that he or she can use. Uh, it's, afterwards, it's easily configurable. Uh, so this is something that's helping uh, the traffic. Uh, also, we we helping uh, with the with the traffic to the live chat, uh, basically the same way. Uh, live chat is using you know the same uh, flow configuration. Uh, so our I would say our templates, you know, our predefined preset te templates are just you know, he helping like kind of optimizing you know the whole flow um, that should should be uh, should be useful for the for the customer. Um, yeah, I would just like to maybe add to that that. Uh in order like there is really no golden rule uh, using chatbot because uh, each one of our customers is uh, very very different so we we don't give like general advices to any, any of them like regarding that we are kind of like just asking them to like try to really understand like who are your customers and then you you kind of like have to adjust the chatbot uh, behavior towards uh, your customer base and this will this will significantly improve uh, the traffic and the qualification of these leads coming from the chatbot, because sometimes our customers either go with uh, like very very simple chatbot, which then kind of goes into a uh, direction of having a lot of uh, like not not really qualified leads, or then they try to have it very very complex, which means that the conversion rate overall gets very very small. So what you need to hit is this kind of like middle ground in between to like understand where it's like the complexity is enough, but not too much uh, to kind of like uh, lose uh, traffic and uh, to have low conversion rate with the chatbot itself. Okay, let's I jump to the next helps. question. I hope so. Uh, so next question, if each of you had to choose one thing that you would do differently next time, what would it be? So maybe 10 seconds each on this. <laughs> Sasha, let's start with you. All right. So maybe definitely uh, what we think with, we, we, would, we, would, we would probably improve the communication. Definitely saying uh, early on to our customers that this feature will probably, uh, we will probably like start charging you for that after some time. So maybe or, like communicating that very okay. early on. Communi communication to yes. early adopters. Zabeniak. I, I I would have joined Pipe Drive much much earlier. No, <laughs> uh, I would I would I would maybe reconsider you know uh, the roadmap of the leads in box uh, uh, to come much earlier. You know to have the adoption of uh, on this new you know feature. Uh, I mean the area of the features uh, called leads uh, because first was chatbot and then inbox second. So maybe I would reconsider this. Got it. So sequence differently. Mm. Um, Kila. Um, I think maybe we were just a little bit too eager, um, is a term I like to put out. Like we, we were so excited about this product and we, we wanted revenue and money from it right away. Um, but we didn't really, as Spinek mentioned, we didn't really look big picture before we asked for money. So I just, um, not being so excited, uh, I don't think would be the thing we would change. <laughs> uh, to, to keep it cool, Katrina. I would just agree with Spinek. Uh, that was also my point, you know, start exploring what happens with those leads we get from chatbot or lead generation tools, where they land in and how these data or how these leads are synced with the rest of the product. So how the inbox and this leads area communicates with the, the rest of the product. So that's what uh, I, I, I wish we had started uh, exploring this earlier. Oh, thank you. And then, um we're at the hour but actually you know i'm happy to stay on for a bit yeah just answer the last few set of questions here so do you have any future plans for developing lead booster do we well we certainly do i can answer that so maybe i can just give you a little bit of glimpse or what, or what we're planning for the lead booster itself so as i said lead booster consists of a couple of features in it in itself so one of them is like the chatbot so for the chatbot, we definitely want to improve uh, the overall user experience, uh, especially with like copy pasting uh, different parts of the flow. 
We also then uh, want to improve significantly the reporting part of the chatbot so that our customers understand uh, how, uh, how their chatbots are performing and where they can actually improve that. Regarding the live chat, uh, we're definitely going to be adding the like uh, website history tracking of the of the visitors. So every time somebody engages with people uh, doing the live chat, they're going to see like which previous pages have they visited, so they can have a constructive uh, discussion. And also, we want to improve the uh, notifications for live chat. And uh, maybe lastly, I want to also say that we want to improve our web forms. We want to. Uh, improve the user experience, especially with uh, like moving around the fields. Also, we're gonna be adding the file support for web forms and uh, a possibility to add images and some kind of native fields for, especially for web forms like GDPR uh, consent options and so on. So maybe this is just like a small glimpse uh, what we are considering right now in which direction to go. Okay, cool. So listen, uh, the next question is actually around the form and I think we should switch this form. But before we do, I'm going to make a note of these questions. And while we show the next slide, we can maybe answer questions, which is, what's your brand strategy? So make a note of that. How do you find new product talent in regard to people who haven't had product in their job title? And then the last one is, during numerous user testings you did, how do you choose prioritize issues to tackle first to solve problems to discover? That's around priority. So we've got a question around brand, a question around talent recruitment, and a question around um, how to prioritize. So maybe if we could switch to the feedback form link. I don't know if uh, who's best to do that. If that's uh, if, I can, I can try. yeah, if you could do that, and then I've got a note of the last three questions. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We'll do that. Because uh, those of you who stayed on, you, the diehard fans out here, um, you you probably just increase your likelihood of getting some awesome swag. So I can I cannot share. So someone else. Okay. Hey. Okay. Let's see. Now try it. Uh, okay, I can. <laughs> uh, so can you see it? It is coming up in a mo. There you go. It's a fair point, maybe not the easiest URL to, uh, to remember, but get your phone, scan the code, and you're away. So listen, while you're doing that, um, then let's go into the other questions, which were, the last three questions were, what's our brand strategy? Um, I don't know if we've got anyone here who could uh, best answer that. I don't think we do, do we? Either I'm looking at you, but then I think you're looking at me. So maybe that means <laughs> maybe that means we haven't got the we haven't got. I think what we're thinking is really we haven't got the right people on the call to answer that. Um, we are uh, kind of actually revisiting our uh, kind of our brand and our brand strategy as we kind of uh, to be more in alignment of of our product strategy moving forward. Um, so yeah, don't have a great answer for you on that one, partly because we're revisiting it ourselves. Um, and next question was around talent recruitment. How do you go about hiring talent, especially with people without product in their title? Now, um, I don't know, but we may have Olivia on this call. Olivia, are you on this call? I think you're on this call. Maybe we can get Olivia on stage and uh, talk to that because Olivia heads up our talent recruitment. And actually, by the way, one of the methods we use is sessions like this, right? We want to see who's interested. Maybe we find um, the, the next designer, the next product person uh, from one of these sessions. So, you know, one of the reasons we do this is we want to we wanna kind of pay it forward and, and uh, share what we've learned. But also we think it's a, it's a great way of... Um, of, of finding talent too. Um, but uh, maybe uh, when and if we can get Olivia on the call, maybe she can answer that question. And then uh, finally, how do we how do we think about prioritization, especially with um, uh, based on what we test? Mm. I would say that 
a big proportion of the usability testing we do in Pipedrive is in the prototyping stage. So that's what makes prioritization easier because in the prototype, we can basically, uh, in the prototyping stage, we can basically address most of these issues, right? Uh, so that's why we are trying to do this very early and in different iterations. Uh, but of course, we also test uh, live products and um, maybe it brings me back to my point that I made during our journey. Uh, we try to understand how painful the problem is for our customers and that's helped us to prioritize. We always try to distinguish must-haves and nice-to-haves. Uh, we we'll always try to find some low-hanging fruit that might be quickly addressed. Uh, so that's not just about identification of the usability issue, but about deep understanding of, uh, you know, what this cause, causes to, to our customers. But maybe uh, Sasha and Spinek might add something here, how they see the prioritization once we have the results from usability testing. Well, I would say that uh, maybe just uh, to go a little bit uh, from a higher perspective, I would say that uh, the main factor that kind of like takes place in, uh, in prioritization is uh, actually that we need to have a strong product vision. And this strong product vision needs to be accompanied with a, a, with appropriate uh, product strategy. And based on when you granulate it enough, then you are uh, able to kind of pinpoint what kind of uh, development or what kind of progress you want to make in order to achieve uh, a certain point, like uh, certain points of the product strategy itself. So this, this kind of helps us to have the strong product vision, helps us to really uh, have like a, like a strong tool set of how we decide in which direction to go. And then obviously we perform a lot of uh, other activities like a research, we're crunching a lot of uh, data to understand uh, like where what what our customers are pay, like uh, pointing to like what are the biggest pain points there, then we crunch the data to understand uh, what is the engagement of the features that we are going to be touching or improving, and this all like gives like a big picture of like what makes the decision making at the end where we decide what are going to be the next things for us to like uh, pursue in the near future. So I hope it kind of answers this question. Yeah, I think so. And I, just to add that, um, uh, so, you know, I, I personally get involved in developing the vision and strategy. So there, how we think about things is uh, that, you know, we probably do things a little differently at Pipedrive. So we really like to understand the destination where we're headed to. And we like to then work backwards and understand how do we get there, right? So we don't necessarily plan forward actually we kind of we kind of think it backwards so right we, we have a clear idea of where we want to head to based on research based on really our understanding of the market and uh, our opinion our point of view of the market how it's evolving how the game is changing and then we build a path some key strategic steps that take us there and then we have the tribes the teams here that take that information and they're closest to the market and they make their own localized decisions about, about how to take that journey, right? So we have a really, I think a really nice mix of, um, dare I call it top down, bottom up thinking, right? So we've got, we've got our strategic path, but we've also got people close to the market to, to uh, constantly understand what the unmet needs are in the market in their problem space and to prioritize it the way they see fit. So um, now we don't actually um, have uh, Olivia at hand, um, HR, but I can say in terms of recruitment, like, like I say, this is one of them. And in fact, you will all get this link to the feedback form. You will all get an email. Um, I have been reminded that everyone who's uh, registered for this session will get an email direct with a link. And, um, uh, you know, we'll, part of that is to really establish a relationship with you. Um, so, you know, if, if working at Pipedrive is something you're interested in, obviously we'd, we'd like to hear that. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's, that's definitely one path. Uh, we generally hire, um, uh, PMs with experience, but there, there are opportunities for, uh, people 
uh, maybe kind of a, a, a windy path uh, to to come work with us. But but reach out to us. I mean, showing that kind of interest here, at least in a session like this, uh, we pay attention to that. Um, but I think. Unless there are any other questions, that may be a wrap. So uh, listen, thank you very much. We really hope you've uh, found something of use here, something of interest. Uh, we just wanted to really open the kimono in terms of how we work. We thought you guys might find it interesting. I mean, even to be frank with you, our own teams were asking, like, how do we do this? So we have some of our own team <laughs> that have joined the session because uh, we have somewhat like maybe 15 tribes, I think, at Pipe Drive. So there are quite a few of us. Um, and so if you think this is of interest, if you find this valuable, um, let us know and maybe we can arrange another one of these. But for now, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your interest and uh, stay safe. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Um.